Hi, David Mould here. We came to Lewis for one key reason. Two beasts show up in Revelation 13 where the mark of the beast is found. Two of them. If we're to prove to the world that America is the second beast, we must first prove that the first one, this blasphemous power seen by John, is the papacy. And part of the evidence is here, in Lewis. Why is it so necessary to establish the identity of this first beast of Revelation 13? Why not go straight to the second one, which we say is America? Because it's as the first beast receives its deadly wound that the second one is seen rising up out of the earth. While one is going down, the other is rising. After 1260 years of dominance, which many of us still know as the Dark Ages, just as Daniel predicted, it's in 1798 that the papacy received her deadly wound. That's when the Pope was taken captive by French troops under Napoleon. Does 1798 ring a bell? What was going on in the world at about the same time? What nation had just been born? What nation announced her declaration of independence in 1776? What nation ratified her constitution in Philadelphia in 1791? What nation was rising quietly, even as the Vatican was licking her deadly wound with the Pope captive for God only knows how long? We're not talking about copycat democracies either. One nation fits the bill, beloved, and that's America. And what the Bible says she will mandate across the whole earth is truly profound. So much for the big picture. Under Washington and the Founding Fathers, the babe has started to creep. She's come out victorious in her war for independence, come out victorious in the War of 1812, and yet, incredibly, when fully mature, according to the Bible, she'll join forces with the first beast, the papacy, to impose the mark of papal authority upon the whole world. That mark, of course, is Sunday keeping, which the papacy openly admits she first introduced into Christianity. That's the big picture.